Hello tankers. Today we'll talk about artillery, specifically tier 4 and 5 artillery. We will go over the selection of modules and equipment, proper positioning, firing preparation and firing itself, as well as other, less obvious features of these particular combat vehicles. Many players follow this simple rule. Arty only shoots from the base, there's no need to move it. This is just wrong. It is extremely important for self-propelled guns to change positions during battle. First, the shorter the distance between the SPG and its target, the faster the shell gets there, and therefore, the easier it is to hit a moving tank by leading it. This is the easiest way to improve accuracy. Reducing the distance to your target is justified in almost every situation. Second, the choice of unusual positions allows you to shoot places where enemy tanks consider themselves safe from artillery fire. After your first shot, you force them to choose, wait for your next shell, or quickly change their position. Often, this causes the enemy to move into the kill zone of one of your allies. Third, it improves your own lifespan, since if the enemy breaks through to your base, they will not be able to quickly find and kill you. It is essential for an SPG to constantly change position during combat, remember that. Every shot starts with preparation, namely, with the process of aiming at the target, this should be done correctly. So even when you are aiming at a stationary target, you must leave a buffer of your gun's horizontal arc to both sides of at least the width of the target. This gives your opponent no opportunity to escape from your target area, even if he suddenly changes his direction of travel. It isn't always possible to follow this rule. Different combat situations can force you to use the very edge of the aiming circle for your shot, and disregarding the possible movement of your sights can lead to the expansion of your aiming circle at the most critical time, forcing you to reset for the shot. To avoid this, learn to use the chassis lock function, by default pressing X while aiming. This will protect you from an unplanned change in accuracy. During the battle, artillerymen repeatedly move the camera over nearly the entire map. To speed up this process, you can use this convenient key combination. Press Ctrl and then right-click on the mini-map, right where you want to look. The camera will instantly travel to this new location and the SPG will begin to turn until the gun is pointed in the desired direction. There is another technique to control the situation in battle. Suppose you are aiming at a certain spot, but you need to assess the situation on the other flank. For example, there is an enemy indicator, and you do not know who it is and want to see if there is a need for your help. You don't have to interrupt your aiming. You can just use the lock gun function, which is activated by pressing and holding the right mouse button. You can then move the camera to another part of the map, get the necessary information, and return the camera, mouse cursor, and sight to its original position by releasing the right mouse button. These simple techniques will help you increase the speed of your shots, and experience comes with practice, as with anything else. Let's proceed to a more detailed analysis of the features of the Tier 4 and 5 artillery. We'll start with the most important thing, guns. Of all the Tier 4 SPGs, the most unusual one is the German vehicle, Grill, which packs the strongest per shot damage with an impressive 680 hit points per shell. Its advantages are especially noticeable in the higher tier battles, where even tier 8 heavy tanks should be afraid of this war machine and should seek shelter from its fire. The remaining three representatives from other nations, the Soviet Su-5, the American M7 Priest, and the French AMX 105AM, have lower damage shells capable of inflicting about 400 hit points of damage, but are compensated with a higher rate of fire. These self-propelled guns are more dangerous in low-tier battles, where tank armor is thin and gives poor protection from explosive shells, and a tank's hit points are about equal to an average shell's damage. The Su-5 has several notable flaws. First, it has the shortest range, 600 meters, when all other Tier 4 SPGs are able to fire at a distance of more than 1,000 meters. However, this disadvantage is balanced by a steeper trajectory for its projectiles, which can hit targets behind obstacles that may safely hide vehicles from other self-propelled guns' fire. Another minus is the low quantity of ammunition, a total of 14 rounds, which always runs out at the most inopportune moment. The Tier 5 SPG cannons are very similar in damage and rate of fire. Their main difference is their aiming speed. The clear winner in this field is the Su-8. It has the ability to move its aim from flank to flank in a minimal amount of time. And the longest firing preparation time belongs to a US self-propelled gun, the M41, making it more advantageous to change your aim only after firing a shot. None of the SPGs have a problem with the radio, because they are equipped with copies of the Tier 8-10 tanks radios. 
The shortest range radio was given to the Su-5 and Su-8, 615 and 625 meters respectively. But this is still sufficient to receive all the necessary information from your teammates. We have already said why it is so important to move your SPG around the map. Now let's see who does this better than the others. Of all the Tier 4 SPGs, the M7 Priest has the best acceleration, and the Su-5 is left to trail behind. The highest top speed belongs to the AMX 105 AM at 60 km per hour, which allows you to cover long distances faster than anyone else. The slowest is the Su-5 again, which can only go up to 30 km per hour. When it comes to turning on a dime, the favorites are the AMX 105 AM and the Grill. The M7 Priest turns very slowly. A brisk light tank will have an easy time spinning it, staying behind the whole time. The Tier 5 SPGs go as follows. Acceleration is about the same, with the Hummel slightly ahead of the others at first, but when it comes to top speed, again, a French vehicle is the undisputed leader. The AMX 13 F3 AM, with its capability to go at 60 km per hour. The M41 is just a bit worse in this aspect. The last place again goes to a Soviet SPG, the Su-8. Unlike the Hummel, which rotates twice as fast as its tier mates, turning on the spot is not a strong point of either the Su-8 or the M41. It is worth noting that all artillery of these tiers has a good concealment rating, which allows you to shoot from within bushes without fear of being seen at medium range. Frozen in place, you can avoid detection even when the enemy creeps very close to your position. However, the higher the tier of an SPG, the lower the default camouflage rating of the vehicle, so don't try to increase this parameter right away. Another notable advantage that almost all Tier 4 and 5 SPGs have is an excellent view range. In stock configuration, without modules, perks, and rations, they have a sight range of 390 meters, which is only 10 meters less than the majority of level 10 tanks. Only the Su-5 again stands out as the worst. Its view range is just 320 meters. Many artillery men don't use view range, believing that teammates should spot the enemy. Although this is often the case, Towards the end of the battle, artillery may not be covered on any flank, and sometimes remains alone. At this point, you can change the outcome of the battle by spotting the enemy for yourself, or for other allied SPGs, before you are seen. In addition, many Tier 5 to 8 tanks have a view range of 40 to 50 meters less than the artillery has, or even worse. Don't miss a chance to take advantage of this. Let's turn to equipment, noting the most useful items for artillery. The first slot should be equipped with a rammer, which reduces your reloading time and increases the number of shots you get each minute, while directly helping you to deal some major damage. The second slot should have an enhanced gun lane drive. The rapid aiming allows you to quickly prepare for a shot or transfer your aim to another flank. The third slot causes a lot of controversy among players, but based on the aforementioned benefits of using the view range of the SPG, we offer you one of two options. 1. Coated Optics For a more dynamic style of play when you can spot an enemy tank over a hill or any other cover in a dangerous situation. 2. Binocular Telescope Is the choice for those who prefer to spot enemy vehicles from behind cover while staying undetected. There is another option which involves a more passive play style. If you're willing to sacrifice the advantage of the view range for a small increase in your camouflage during stops, you should install the camouflage net onto your self-propelled gun. The choice of consumables is quite simple. The first two slots will be occupied with a repair kit and a first aid kit. If you wish to maximize the maneuverability of your vehicle, the third slot should be equipped with oil or gasoline. And if your goal is to earn more credits, then the fire extinguishers would be best. Now, let's choose the skills and perks for the crew. The most important skill for the commander is Sixth Sense. You cannot underestimate its value. You will always know when you are spotted and that it's time to seek cover. The gunner should learn Snapshot, which improves accuracy. Though the SPG has no turret, this skill works with the barrel movement as well. The driver should select one of these, off-road driving for more rapid position changes, or clutch braking, the use of which will prevent the enemy getting behind you at close range. If there is a radio operator, he should have Situational Awareness. This gives an appreciable increase to your view range. For the loader, the perk Adrenaline Rush can help speed reloading when the vehicle's hit points are low. Another useful perk to have for the whole crew is Brothers in Arms, which gradually improves all of the tank's parameters and, most importantly, reduces reload time. Remember that Brothers in Arms only works when the entire crew has learned it 100%. If you fell in love with the Tier 4 and 5 SPGs, and the crew already has three perks, 
Choosing the camouflage skill can significantly improve your survival in combat. So, this is essential for victory. 1. Don't forget to move around the map, taking unconventional positions. Remember that cutting the firing distance is an advantage for a successful hit on the enemy. 2. Properly prepare for the shot. 3. Know the advantages and disadvantages of the vehicle you are using and be able to use them well. We hope that this material has helped you learn the pros and cons of the Tier 4 and 5 SPGs and improves your enjoyment of self-propelled artillery. Until next time.